Hi everyone, I welcome you in Black Hat Asia Arsenal 2024 with the presentation Nightingale Docker for Pentesters. Before jumping into the actual presentation, I wanted to tell you about myself a little bit. I'm working as product security engineer at Splunk. Uh, I'm running a YouTube channel which is named as Insider Learner where I try to make a videos on the security concepts, how you can uh, like from set up the tools or set up the configuration and using the same and uh, how you can perform the same. I'm trying to uh, record those videos. Uh, I also speak at conferences like Black Asia in 2022, 2023 and this year as well. Uh, I also present this con uh, this open source tool in OAP's Global AppSec, that EU edition. Uh, also, there is one conference from Docker community, that's Docker Hands-On uh, Chapter 6, I believe. Uh, and also, uh, like I speak in uh, OAP's local chapters. And recently, in last year, December, I present in IWCon 2023 as well. Uh, I'm very passionate about the sharing knowledge and uh, having experiences from others like from the community, uh, I do like uh, uh, like to mention the step-by-step -step processes or uh, the research or the information that I have get from while doing Googling. So I, I try to make it a blog and frame the, that information in such a way that it can be help you in your task, day-to-day -day task. Apart from my techie stuff, I do like bike trips and trekking and these are my little uh, these are my recent uh, trips that I have done, recent treks that I have done and the third picture which is from the Black Hat in 2022. So yeah, this is what I do, this is what uh, about myself. Okay, coming to the actual, uh, the tool, actual idea of tool, uh, I wanted to share a problem statement with you guys because this is something that uh, brings you or that get an idea like why you invest that amount of time to create this open source. So it's about repetitive testing environment or instance to encapsulate those in uh, those processes into a Docker image. So what I bring on the table for the pen testers or in short, what exactly the problem statement is or what I face as an uh, issue to create this open source. So while I was doing pen testing, I have to create a multiple uh, in testing instance in the virtual machine. And then once the, uh, once the environment is set up, I need to configure multiple open source tools that we usually interact with while doing pre, uh, while doing pen testing on the multiple targets. We have to install it. We have to install the programming language support. We have to install modules. We have to install uh, on the configuration. Like we have to done the configuration in according to us. So this repetitive process is time taking. Also, there is one um, unfortunate thing might happen with most of the pen tester is once you run the virtual machine few days and it got paused after some time and you won't be able to revert it back, you won't be able to get it back whatever you have done as a storing POCs or uh, uh, installing multiple tools, configurations and programming language support, blah, blah, blah. So then you again take a whole day to install the setup, to install those tools, to install the configuration and done all the things that you you supposed to do and you have already done in your previous virtual instance but um, unfortunate scene like you won't be able to revert it back so that's that's how the nightingale came into an existence uh, so with the help of docker technology i created docker image where i have tried to install or try to replicate the same environment or we can say the same experience that you you get while working with the virtual machines uh, so hold tight, uh, I have something great for you in the later side of this presentation and I have some little demo as well. So I hope that will help you for sure. Okay, so why I choose Docker? So there are multiple points, multiple uh, facts that we can consider here, but I have some basic one which give you an idea like why I choose Docker. So coming to this graph, if you can see Docker under container. Now, we can say that Docker is a superset of container, which brings that Docker will allow you to build, to run, and to manage the containers. But uh, coming to the container, it only gives you a core functionality to run the container. Now, example of container could, uh, could be uh, Kubernetes, right, where we manage our containers. But 
on the top of that we are interacting with the docker images that we usually supposed to run and then scale up uh, the complete architecture so thing goes like this now coming to the facts that i've bring from the from the google it's like it's completely open and distributive collaboration that that brings that uh, it is very open to collaborate very open to share ideas uh, or sharing the feedbacks and uh, like whatever you think that it could bring something new to this particular docker image or particular technology in terms of docker image uh, distributed is something we can consider as uh, it can bring to the separate uh, separate teams where uh, from development from testing to to managing the labels or everything like everything that considered to be uh, in software development life cycle uh, that can be uh, like distributed along the multiple teams so that they can use their expertise and bring something good enough or bring something good stuff so that uh, the the consumers can you know have a better experience or great experience while using this uh nearly like one of the quarter companies are adopting docker which is great thing because uh nowadays tools are literally uh platform independent most of the time so we have to bind with an environment so that it can run with the supposed performance or supposed uh output that uh, that customers or consumers are uh, like thinking of while using this tool or thinking about using this tool uh like most of the very famous fa very renowned uh, uh softwares like nginx services redix and postgres are running on docker which is running fantastic uh around 90% of like kts users increase in the cloud managed services and uh if we talk about little bit about aws so the sh shift of uh like the shift of aws fargate from AWS EC2 instances like increased by 40%, which is which is uh, which is commendable from 2017 to 2021 in the time gap of this particular period. Um, one thing which I also believe is like uh, it is very very portable. Uh, you can run on any virtual, uh, I mean on any host operating system, uh, whatever you are running or whatever you have. So it is very helpful. It is very portable. So someone asked me why Docker technology for Nightingale and not virtual machine. But this is my use case, right? Uh, so Flash says, uh, the, the character in the, uh, in the comic says that it's powerful. And when I say it's powerful, I will say you some of the points here. Uh, these are my analysis that where I uh, think I observe that this can be useful for the pen testers who wanted to perform testing on the targets effectively and without uh, losing their POCs or without losing their information that they have they have gathered while while doing the testings or to the target okay if I talk about resource efficient uh, resource efficient we can consider to be like it is designed as light weighted where uh, it can run on the host operating system and it is very uh, highly resource efficient from the virtual environments that we usually uh, use as a traditional virtual environment where we install it and run it and use it. Also, they have uh, they have capability of consuming fewer resources from your host machine. It's like uh, it will use only when it required. Uh, the second point is version or tag control. Uh, again, as I said, uh, as the title suggests, and the title says that uh, you can easily control your versions. That means that. Uh, you can jump to or revert back to any tag that was running before or that was running perfectly uh, before uh, uh, rather than in the newer <coughs> newer tag so it can be easy to roll back to that part of previous uh, previous um, uh, version previous tag and all the things will be available for you as well uh, the third point is portability again uh, as i uh, mentioned in the uh, like previous slides that uh, it's very use, useful for to, to port this Docker image on one host machine to another one or the one operating system to another one. Low overhead. Now, Docker containers have minimum overhead uh, rather than in virtual machine because they have shared the host systems kernel uh, and the resources. 
this means that docker can be start stop restart and uh, scale down or scale up much faster than the virtual machines and it is having a great or largely impact and uh, like impact on the performance and the next point is fast boot up as the title suggests it will spin up in an, within a second or within like when once you run the container it will start and all the configuration will be there at your folders so whatever you want to run whatever you have to done or whatever tools you want to run every specific folder will be done and all the configurations will be on the same portal or will be on the same page where you can see you can uh, edit or you can run the files as well uh, and all the configuration all this complete process of running the container and boot up of the uh, the environment will take less than a second the next point is and the last point is easy to scale as i said it is since it is very easy and very fast to start stop and restart the container services and which is much 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 faster than uh, the uh, faster than the virtual machines so it is a very easy to run multiple containers at the same time within a second and uh, you will get all the configuration all the tools installation programming language module support everything will be there on the multiple containers within a second okay now the time's come uh, let's discuss about nightingale okay now if i talk about nightingale uh, i have less down multiple points for uh, for the use cases that i have that i have experienced over virtual machines is that uh, open source accessibility now i really welcome everyone who is watching this session and if you came to this point of this video i really want that i want some of the uh, like feedback some of the suggestions and uh, if you have some better ideas, then I really welcome. I really want that you should uh, put that thing in the GitHub so that it can be more easier to me to track the uh, the thinking of yours or the ideas of yours or the feedback you are providing me. Everything, everything or the suggestions as well. So this is something that I want and that's why I put this tool as an open source. And the next point is again uh, this since the theme of this open source is docker powered and you can use this uh, this open source tool only if there is a docker engine running in your machine uh, the only required thing i i want from you guys is like you need to install docker that's it uh, as i said in the previous uh, slide that is uh, fast boot up that it will run within a second uh, so once you just run the command, it will give you all the com uh, configuration, all the installation at a, at a specific folder that you want to go with the target. You can do that as well. Uh, uh, like the next point is resource efficiency. As I, as I said already, uh, Nightingale is like optimize your resources uh, based on the uses. So it will only take the resources from the host machine, whatever it required and how much it required. Uh, comprehensive testing security it's like you can perform multiple uh, domains of uh, security you can perform VAPT on that whether it can be network web API or uh, 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 mobile pen testing as well um, it includes all the multiple tools uh, which I will show you in the demonstration part uh, like it will list down all the tools that you usually interact while you working with the virtual machines uh, the next point is platform independent, which like you can run this Nightingale open source along every platform where the Docker engine support. Again, the last point, which I think it's a golden point for this open source is uh, browser accessibility. Now you can run this open source thing through, through your browser directly by following or by hitting your loopback and the port that you are running on the container and that's it uh, everything you can do or every action you perform or every uh, fuzzing you done for your targets you can done from browser itself so it's a it's a golden point for me to or golden for, point for nightingale to use uh, while doing your pen testing okay so these are some of my snaps that i've taken out from the terminal and it looks like this 
So if you can see on the left side, there is a MSF console. Yeah, you can uh, use MSF console as well. On the next, just after the MSF console, it's a ADB connect, which clearly says that you can perform mobile pen testing as well. On the top of that, you can see that I have used some of the utilities from Linux that you, who am I, you name, and everything is working fantastic. And now coming down that I've run the Nmap and the very famous website, which is uh, intended vulnerable, uh, is Valen Web, And again, it is uh, like scanning the ports as well. So these are some of the snaps that I've prepared that I've added and you will be seeing all these things live in the demonstration part. Okay, uh, so it's time for demo. Uh, so this is this is my GitHub looks like. And if I go through with the documentation which I've created, so here you will get an idea, brief idea about what I've created, what are the prawns and why you, uh, why I've created this one. But if you want a detailed information, you can switch to either the wiki sections or you can switch to this Nightingale link here. So it will give you, uh, you uh, a page where I have mentioned all the related information like why this Nightingale, uh, the introduction about it, the brief introduction about it, like whatever uh, the use cases or the advantages that I've put. Also coming to the next, uh, uh, the section is installation setup where I have give you uh, or I've provided you the direct URL or we can say direct uh, the Docker commands, just copy it and run it. And you can uh, change according to your uh, requirement as well. Um, so here are few of the examples that I've provided based on the very generic or very common Docker examples or Docker commands where you can use it, where you can change it according to yourself. Okay, so this is, uh, this is what I've provided for the installation and setup and the coming part is the list of tools. Um, so here I have provided the list of tools that I have installed in this in this open source. Uh, you can find it, you can just like uh, run these commands and you will be able to use that. Few of the tools are binary, so you won't be able to see on those folders that I've created, which we will see in the later part of this video. And uh, the next uh, like few of the tools that I have uh, installed is in um, uh, MobSF or Runtime Mobile Security or ADB, JDX or uh, Sicklist. Also, yeah, uh, I have I have created a, doc, uh, a a folder where I have put all the word list as well, where it will be helpful for you to fuzz in. Uh, last but not the least is like the programming languages supports. So as of now, these are the programming languages. Oh, I forgot to update this. There is one uh, programming language update as Go languages also there in Nightingale. Okay, so this is it for like the the uh, GitHub page, but coming to the source code, uh, if you want to understand the source code, like how it goes and what are the architecture of it. Uh, so currently uh, it is having two architecture. The first one is the common one, which is uh, the AMD one. This another one is the ARM64, which is for the Mac users, just for the better performance. Uh, so if you go with the ARM64, the folder is there. Uh, but if you want to go with um, very main or actually the uh, the heart of this file, uh, this open source is this Docker file. Now coming to this Docker file, uh, these are the configurations that I have made. Uh, these are the the images that I have uh, pulling the other informations. And here are the Metasploit uh, installation and every steps you will be getting uh, in this particular source code. And same goes with the other files as well, where you will be seeing the the configurations based on what I've created or what I've put in these configurations. Now, if I'm running the Docker, um, Docker desktop. Okay, so Docker desktop will take time, but Docker container will not take that much of time. Also, the same quiz with Nightingale, it will not take that much of time. Okay, so I think it is running. Um, as you can see, it is just starting and I'm still waiting. Okay, cool, awesome. So currently this size of the image, so previously it was around and around 10 GB of size, but right now the size of this image is around six or seven. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, see, 
six or seven. Uh, it's around six or seven. Uh, also, once you run the co uh, container, uh, you need to run these commands, which I have provided in this uh, uh, readme sections. If you can go with wiki and uh, installation setup, so you will see this command. Uh, okay, I'll I'll take this one. I'll remove that container, which is I've already running it. I'll delete it. I'm opening a terminal. Now, if I run this command, uh, since I've already pulled this uh, image, so it won't take that much of time to pulling the image. Uh, in your case, it will take time because first time the image need need some time to pull to get all the information or all the metadata from the image, right? So once I create that, so it is running perfectly fine. And in the background, you can see the container is just started. Now, if I minimize this and I open this one, so as you can see, this is running perfectly fantastic. Now, let me uh, increase the font for you. Now, if you want to run, let's say, uh, in map here, you can run that. Also, if you want to run, let's say, msf console, then again, it is just started. And after a few times, like you will, okay, I think I need to update this msf console. So it's started. Uh, so like, this is how it is working. And few of the use cases that will be coming up uh, like once you start, I'll show you one ADB command where I have run this. Okay, so if I show you a power mirror. Now, there is one uh, feature as well where whatever you are doing in your previous terminal, it won't bring to the another terminal. So like the, uh, the every terminal, which is completely interactive, independent, uh, like whatever you are doing here, you won't be able to see here. And all the, like all the, uh, uh, like the commands that you're supposed to run in your virtual machines will be showing here, so let's say, um, Let's say search, search, exploits, if it works. See, the list of exploit, you will get all the things like that you supposed to do in your virtual machine. So everything is working fine. Uh, coming to the, to the, uh, uh, the Android pen testing. So I have, I have created one, uh, instance or a rooted phone, and this is my rooted phone. So I was connecting with, to my laptop and it is running okay cancel it and here you can see like it is running fine now what i will do is i'll go to the settings i'll go to the settings uh system advanced and developer option Uh, as you can see in the developer option, there is a there is a section called uh, ADB ADB over network, which is connected on the same internet or same Wi-Fi. So what I need to do is I'll go here. Um, let me open this quickly. I'll go here. I will run ADB connect. 195.160, oh sorry, 192.168.1.5 and it will ask me for this allow USB debugging which I need to allow then once I click on it and OK it so now if I run again so you, you will be able to connect to the ADB console now run ADB shell 
and you will be able to uh, list down all the things that you used to do while running let's say pm command that package uh, i believe uh, pm list is the command no pm hyphen okay i think i forgot if you go up a little bit okay yeah list packages so list packages and it will brings you the complete list of the tools or i mean the application which is running inside this particular uh, uh android device so this is how you turn your um your mobile pen testing with this open source tool or nighting it so yeah this is it uh coming to the next so yeah this is it uh this is what i have created uh, i'll show you a little bit of use cases because of the timing issue but we can uh discuss in the later uh discussion on the github channel if you want to connect somewhere on online platforms and i'm happy to connect and happy to discuss your ideas as well okay thank you for coming to the last side of this presentation and i really thank you for be with me to watch this session or to watch this uh a presentation through the last slide and uh, now it's time for the discussion um if you have anything you want to give as a feedback or suggestion i have put the qr code just once you open that qr code you need to type discuss and it will redirect you through my discussion panel that i've created where you can put your uh questions you can put your sub feedback you can put your suggestions you can even raise a issue for the same uh i believe it's a great uh thing or it's a great help from the community where you guys can share your ideas and uh i will try to make it up i will try to add those feedback suggestions so that i can give a better performance tool and the later releases of uh this nightingale so thank you so much thank you so much for be with me uh we will see we will connect over uh, social platforms so bye bye